All right. This is bmxweekly.com. And uh, I guess this is, you could say, this is uh, my first go at uh, YouTube. Did a little practice with Jason Richardson last week, uh, but this is your first official one. And I wanted to start with uh, somebody that probably everybody would know. So Harry Leary, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Dale. How are you today? Good, thanks. Good, thanks. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I guess let's start with it. Uh, we're just going into the 2023 season. Uh, I think a lot of us uh, watching this will see that you've just uh, moved on to uh, Daylight. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, the whole new deal with Daylight and Richard Huvard. Uh, it's pretty exciting, actually, because um, I actually start my 50th consecutive year of racing this year. So I raced in 1973, and I have raced at least two races every year. Um, I always did uh, Phoenix. Black Mountain was it was always one that I loved going to. And then I would always do um, the SoCal National at Redmond's track or, or wherever. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I've known Richard Hubbard from back in the Diamondback days. He he kind of took over when uh, well, not took over, but Diamondback. I left Diamondback in 92. And so they had kind of given up on the whole factory team thing. And they, you know, Richard was running the Camarillo bike company in Camarillo and which was like right down the street from where Diamondback was. Um, so Diamondback reached out to him to, Hey man, can you, you know, continue doing a BMX kind of racing effort for us through your bike shop. And so, you know, Richard took over and, and, you know, did that for quite a few years and, and then him and Redmond hooked up. And so I've known Richard for a long time and, and I've always, you know, 2018, I started sending Richard some texts. I said, hey, man, want to ride your bike? Super cool looking bike. It's custom paints. Cool. Um, it's just, you know, handmade in USA. And I just thought that might be a, a good bike to ride. And people that were riding them then were doing good on them. And, and um, so every year I would send them a text and, you know, night 2019, no, we're kind of full 2020, 22. And then finally I timed it. I must've just timed it just right and sent him one from the road back East. And I think I was in Louisville and watched Corbin Shara ride and, you know, looked at his bike there. And I thought, dude, I gotta get, I gotta ride one of these bikes. And, and, you know, I grew up riding, you know, since 1977, I rode for factory JMC and, and, um, so I've always been part of a factory effort that made their own bikes that we represented on the track. And it really gave us a reason to do good, you know, um, to train and, and, you know, perform on the track and sell brand and, and, and be a, a spokesman for that, for that company. So it's just, it's really good to be back on a factory team, a real live, you know, full on effort here. So it's cool. And with Elise post, just uh, joining the team as well, <laughs> you've definitely got some, uh, Great teammates there. I know, right? I mean, you know, they, we announced we announced it in Las Vegas that um, you know, at least post is on 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 a daylight and and um, you know, Corbin Shara and, and I'm going to be in Houston in two weeks and that's gonna be a pro race there and I get to set up the pit and do the whole thing for the pros. And I know uh, from what Richard says they like their they have to have a, a pit area kind of behind everything so they can go back there and kind of regroup. And I get it. And, you know, I'm just going to be like a little fly on the wall, a sponge kind of listening to what, you know, what they talk about. And, you know, and you never know. I mean, I, I've been doing this a long time. I might be able to, you know, not bring anything to anybody really, but I, I see things that maybe they don't see, you know, themselves doing, you know what I mean? Like I know that elisa has got Sam and, and, uh, but, you know, not everybody sees everything that they're doing. And that's really what a, a second set of eyes are for, you know? Yeah. And I think today's pros are very, obviously very serious. As e like, say, even yeah. the track, they're super serious. And, you know, you obviously, you just said you're in your 50th year. So I'm sure there's little bits of the piece that they'll pick up on you as well. I think you understand uh, when they, you know, you don't talk to them when they get fifth in the semi and, and stuff that like not everybody would realize, you know, so they've probably got a good guy in the corner having you around, you know? Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's just going to be fun, man, to watch those guys work and, and how they work. And, you know, cause a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of pro racing, a lot of the success is obviously mental, right? When you show up on race day, the racing is the easiest part of the sport. You, it's not a physical effort. You don't hurt. 
you know, training, when you go out train every day, that's the physical part of it. And then you have to suffer and you got to put yourself through a lot of physical pain and mental pain and getting yourself to go out there and do it. But when you show up and you got to get in the gate, I mean, it's 35 seconds of effort. That's easy. That's, there's nothing really hard there. It's all mental. So for me to get to watch those guys kind of, you know, before the race, what they do after the moto, what they do and, you know, what their, you know, their routine, because ev- we all have a routine. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you know, you won the world. You probably had, you probably had a routine that, you know, your helmet went in the same spot. Your shoe, oh, yeah. your bike went in the same spot. Mm-hmm. You know, you did it. You took the same route from the finish line to your pit. And then the same, same stretches. From, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way, man. Mm. I, I, once I start a routine for the weekend, no matter where I'm at, I, I do that routine every day, all, you know, all three days, it's the same route to the, to the staging and the same warm up you know, route. And, um, you just, you kind of get into a little deal cause it's, it's all, you know, you're kind of organizing your brain before you get in the gate. Yeah. It, it's, uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing that part of what they do. Yeah. And I think we've all seen daylight, you know, they always, Rich has always done a great job, always stands out, does something different, doesn't follow what everybody else is doing. And, but I think you've done one race already with him. And I was following your social media during Vegas a couple of weeks ago and you was posting a lot and I'm sure everybody saw, saw what I was seeing. I mean, already you've got to have a lot more eyeballs on, on what daylight's doing, you know, just through you in one, one weekend. So it's, I I can see why it's, uh, it makes sense for them as well, you know? Thanks, Dale. It's, I'm glad, you know, because you never know. I mean, you get a lot of likes, but, you know, it's not really about that. Um, for me, I just love talking about the sport of BMX. It's, and I, whenever I post anything, I don't say the sport or my sport. I say our sport. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you you put in many years of helping to build and, you know, put the sport where it's at. And the same for me and the same for, you know, Stu and, and all the guys that have put all these years in. And it's just so cool to still be a part of it. So I really am looking forward to getting better at social media. I mean, like my page, my Facebook page right now is a normal page and I'm maxed out. It, you know, you can only have 5,000 friends and, and I'm maxed out, you know, and I can't. So I need to change that to an athlete page and I need to do all these things that I need to, you know, maybe I can contact my my great niece who's like, nine or something that she can help me like, how to you know how to how to do it correctly no i mean it, it works my my daughter's almost 11 now and you know she's been bugging us for a while now to she wants to be on instagram they they you know it's funny i told her a couple of years ago you cannot be on social media no but then <laughs> you get you know you know you know when you're on instagram you get uh they recommend you people and we're told our daughters you know my daughter you can't be on it. You're not, you're too young, whatever. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, I, I'm looking at Instagram and I get, uh, you know, a pairing or a recommendation from my daughter. So <laughs> she already had an account. Um, so anyway, we, we, we went, you know, put it to private and we let her do it in her own little fun way. And, yeah. but, but what I'm getting at is, is she's really getting good at it already with the reels and the putting videos together and music and, you know, it's harder for us as we get older to keep up with yeah. it. And and you, especially in BMX, you've got to be able to keep up with it to be somewhat relevant. Uh, but the kids are really quick at, at learning and stuff. So I'm hoping kind of the same thing in the next couple of years. My my daughter, I can really utilize her with, uh, with the stuff I'm doing with all the, the new technologies that the kids pick up on. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a great topic right there is when you and I were, you know, back in the 80s and the early 90s when we were growing up, we had magazines they did all that for us. You know mm-hmm. I mean, we, you know, the, like the, the, obviously there wasn't social media, but we had, we had print media who basically made us famous. You know what I mean? Did all the things that, that now we have to do on our own within social media. And so I look at the pros today, like, okay. And, and I, I try to follow the guys, you know what I mean? I really do because I can learn from them you know, how they're promoting themselves and what they talk about and, you know, how often they post and, and just content. Cause that's really what it's all about is content and what, cause you want to say things that people are want to read and, you know, want to come back and read again. You know what I mean? That's kind of like you're creating this, this, obviously it's called a following, right? But I don't see, unless you correct me if I'm wrong, who is out there current pro 
that is really doing a stellar job of marketing themselves to help their sponsor. Like, I mean, right now you got Pull Magazine and, you know, you know, Toby's trying to do BMX action again, but that's a whole different deal for a whole different reason. You know, who, what pro out there has really got it upon himself and, and promoting himself within social media? Watch the motocross guys. I mean, that's there. There is where you have your foundation of at least what you should be as good as, you know, uh, Cooper Webb or uh, Colt Nick. And Colt Nichols is doing a great job because he just got on Honda. So I'm following him and I'm watching what he's doing, you know, and, um, you know, Adam Cincinnarello is pretty good. Roxon's really good there's as of, well. Yeah. So there's a lot of good guys, are elite, you know, motocross guys, but. You know, I try to follow it. Connor Field isn't too active that much anymore. And, you know, um, you know, I don't know. Are there guys out there that I'm I missing? Think, that... I think Barry Nobles is probably the the, the best guy at it, you know. And yeah, I, Barry... I, I, I can understand why a lot of the current double A's, um, you know, I was team manager for Maris when social media was kind of coming in. You know, he'd moved out here and he wasn't really into social media, but he could back it up with flat out results. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. it's evolved a lot in the last 10 years, even since marriage. So you've got to, yeah, you've got to trickle that part into it. But I think it's hard for a lot of those guys because they've got a, a trainer, a coach on, on their shoulders. They've got their own pressure. They're, they're, they're doing it themselves. And then to, you know, to hop on your phone and start doing all that stuff as well. It's hard. But I think Barry is is the the, the guy that they all should be looking at because he just does a great job at it, you know? Yeah, Barry does do a good job. Yeah. yeah. And you know who does probably the best job? And who is very pleasing to watch is Caroline Buchanan. Yeah, no, she, she, yeah, like does, say, yeah. Man, she, her, I don't know if she's got somebody that does it for her or, but she has always got great content and she's pretty consistent. And that's what, that's what pops up on your feed every day. You know what I mean? You got to like, mm -hmm. you know, and she's real. she just posted something, you know, I saw something this morning about her, uh, her husband or boyfriend got hurt and, you know, he kind of she kind of re rehabilitated him and she did this little documentary and it's it's just really, you know, entertaining and it kind of pulls you in. And so I think, you know, and I learned from, you know, watching her do stuff and and reels, you know, I was on the road for seven months, man. I'd be driving and just watching reels the whole time um, because it, they repeat. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you, you watch one reel and repeat and until you move on to the next one. And so, you know, I'm driving. I don't have to stare at the screen, you know, and I would, and it's, and I don't know how to do the reels yet. And I, I tried one and I messed it all up. And you know, so uh -huh. it's hard because it evolves all the time. So we're constantly yeah. trying to keep, you know, same thing. I've just kind of got onto the, the, the reels on Facebook. I've been playing around with it for the last couple of weeks. You know, somebody said, Hey, yeah. you know, I've never really uh, done video and stuff in Facebook. I always thought it looked grainy and not very good, but now they're doing reels. It's a little bit better quality. And um, actually Byron Friday, who's very good at social media is always very, uh, he's always giving me little tips and stuff as well. So yeah. shout out to, to Byron for that. But yeah, it looks like as social media evolves. We have to evolve with it. Otherwise we get left behind and yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a nonstop thing, but uh, it's just finding that, that balance, you know, I think that uh, is the key for it. Yeah, Byron's a good guy, man. Him and I were, uh, he was a mountain bike product manager and I was a BMX product manager at Diamondback for four or five years and we traveled all over the world together. Yeah, it was cool. Taiwan. Ah, uh, he's a book, yeah. of, book Italy, of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he remembers everything. Yeah. Um, let's hop into, obviously, like I say, you're on Daylight, you raced, um, you know, we we're talking a few minutes about, you know, you, your tour that you was doing last year, but uh, I was watching you in Vegas racing and uh seems like you and Tooney have some good old battles, eh? <laughs> yeah um well i think i owed tuny one from vegas 2015 <laughs> he put me into the wall and i you know and and i have you know i have video of that man and and the angle that he hit me at was like okay that one was on purpose right so <laughs> but he's a big guy and you know he's not easy to move so when you're dealing with a big guy like that you got to be more strategic and not so physical so in vegas I had an opportunity and I thought, you know, I'm, I don't want to give up second here. And he started to lean on me pretty hard and I thought, all right, okay. Had he not leaned on me like he did, like, you know, from the leaning down on me, like to push, pinch me off or knock me out. I thought, you know, then I just kind of tossed him a little elbow and he fell <laughs> down. And so I know, 
I know he's, I got one coming, man. I just know it. And I, <laughs> so I just got to be ready for it. And when it happens, you know, because, um, you know, him and I've been doing this to each other since 1977 and not on <laughs> purpose, but we race each other hard and, and mm -hmm. it's always been respectful. And, um, but I know I got one coming. So if I, I, if I get, if he serves it to me, I have to like take it and cross the line and, you know, make sure that I, I'm, I'm a good, you know, I'm a good sport. Which yeah, is hard no, for me. <laughs> good to see. And is it, is it Woody Woodruff? He's pretty good as well, right? Yeah. Woody's really quick. So Woody came into the 61 and overclass this, this last year. Right. So he raced and, you know, he ended up nag one and, and I ended up nag four and, um, but yeah, he's super quick. Um, he runs in easy gear, which is kind of cool because then his gear, he gets to the turn really good, but you know, I haven't reached him enough to really figure, figure out his deal, but I know that because of his easy gear, he's going to be a, a guy that could probably get passed down straight away or something. You know what I mean? Like just carry momentum into a corner on him because his gear runs out or, you know, something like that. And he's a light little guy. He's pretty light. So it won't take much to kind of, kind of maybe push him out of the way. <laughs> and obviously I know he's a class below you, but Roop is still really, um, he's so impressive. Big daddy. Well, you know, so now there's that new class. There's a 56 and over 20 inch class. So I won a 51 and over expert national. On I saw tour. that. Yeah. And yeah, you beat Renato, right? I saw, that, right? Class, I saw right? that. Yeah. And, uh, in North Carolina. So I looked at the ages on them in the main and everybody in the main, but me was 54 years and younger. So all those guys are gone that mm -hmm. I beat in North Carolina. So now it's 56 and over and yeah, big daddy's in there. Um, Eric sweet sweets uh, is fast. You know, he's got some pull down the first straight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and big daddy is big daddy. I mean, he's got whatever, you know, and you guys know he's Tomac blood, right? Yeah. 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 Eli yeah. yeah. Is, yes. Eli is big daddy blood. Yeah. That comes from Eric's sister. So yeah, <laughs> there's some genetics going on there that people need to know about. Yeah, he don't he he still looks good on a bike and is 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 in control. He knows when to back off. He knows when yeah. to settle for second and third. It's just like long term game, you know. Yeah, yeah, he, he's he's got it down, man. And yeah. so it's funny. Um, so I've been, you know, I raced Vegas with a bad hand, and and uh, I, sh you know, I probably shouldn't have raced, but I ended up coming out of that race nag one on cruiser. But in the main on Sunday, I my hand was done i couldn't i couldn't pull anymore so i had eight roof had seven i told big dad i go dude don't worry about me just you know do your yeah. thing and it was so fun man i kind of like i just sat on my bike and i watched big daddy leave on everybody and he ended up getting second from lane seven so i don't know if you know me telling him like i'm not gonna cut over get out and cut over on you open up a <laughs> hole you know because you know what i mean because if i'd have got out i'd have cut big daddy off so <laughs> and that's that, you know what i mean like that's kind of what it goes on. It's called, I call it the pro fade. You know, you come out mm. and move over as, as soon as the first pedal is over, you're moving over on the guy. You yeah. have to, right, Dale? I mean, you, you can't, oh, yeah. oh, you can't yeah, sit no around problem. out there and you no. can't worry about the 30 foot line. I all. was like you. I was not the biggest guy in the pro class. So if if I uh, once in a while got a, a better gate than Nelson or Levesque or something, I'm like, I'm not going to drag race and beat these guys. <laughs> My only chance, you know, elbow over. I know, right? <laughs> Which wasn't much, but the few times, you know? Hey, it, it only takes a couple, man. I, you know the way I figure it? You only have to, as a pro or anybody right now, because there's so many races here, you only have to win one mm -hmm. a weekend. That's yeah. it. Even as a pro, if you get one win out of your weekend in a pro weekend, you're going to go to the grands with the correct scores. And and so that's how Eddie and I looked at it over the over the course. Of, we do. We only need to get one of these. Yeah. You know? And and. It, so you go in fighting and, you know, and you'll learn, like, let's say your Saturday is not a great Saturday. You'll make your little adjustments or whatever, or get a little pissed off or whatever, and then come back Sunday. And if you can win that one, then, you know, you you got seven more or whatever, nine more now in the pro class. But, um, you know. I think it, Ellis it, even said that you just need one score a weekend. I think it was, that's one of his quotes. Yep. Um, and yeah, yeah. Look how good yeah. he was at it. Um Harry, you um uh, you was on the road a lot, it seemed like last year. You know, every time I saw you, you was on the East Coast, you were doing clinics somewhere, you was in yeah, all over the place. So tell us a little yes. bit about uh what was behind all that and uh if you enjoyed doing it. Oh man, uh it was the best time of my life. It was absolutely the 
it was the scariest decision I ever made. Um, but once I got on the road and, you know, every night, no matter where I was, I would, I would look, you know, at the sunset or whatever I was doing. I'd go, am I, would I rather be anywhere else than where I am? And would I rather be with somebody else than who I'm with? The answer is I would rather not be anywhere than where I am right now today. And I certainly am enjoying being alone, you know, and developing my relationship with God. I mean, that's a fact right there. But when I was 13, I watched on any Sunday and the Mert Law will scene with his mechanic, they were getting in a van and they were going on the road and they're sleeping in their van while they're driving. And I go, I told my buddy that I went and saw the movie with, I'm going to do that someday. But as a corporate sponsor, when I wrote for Diamondback, we didn't get that opportunity. You know what I mean? We really had to be, we, we showed up with five Lincolns. We had 11 hotel rooms. You know, the, the firm did it. You, you know, you were part of that. You, you saw that, that era as well. And so when, uh, you know, I, I, my life was emotionally upside down and, you know, uh, my dog died on May 3rd and May 8th, I got in my truck with two bikes and, and my clothes and I hit the road and, and I lived out of my truck for eight months and, you know, raced and trained and rode every day. And, and it was the absolute best thing I've ever done. I saw a country, I hung out in, you know, Danbury, Connecticut, where the Bethel Supercross track was. Um, I watched podcasts. I, you know, I kind of, I really got into Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you know who he is, but mm -hmm. the guy's brilliant. Um, so I got a lot of, got, you know, I did a lot of self-developing and, you know, trying to, to get more, not, not to get more intelligent because you can't get more intelligent. You can just become wiser and, and know more things about yourself and, and how to change yourself from the inside out. So, yeah, it was, and, you know, I did it out of my truck. And so I bought a motorhome two months ago or a month ago, and I'm going to be doing it this year out of a motorhome. And, oh, cool. uh, you know, it's, I can't wait. I can't, I can't wait, man. There's nothing. BMX is, uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, like I said, I'm in my 50th year right now. And, and, uh, God has blessed me with, um, you know, keeping me from being hurt to the point where I can't do this. And so I can keep doing it. And, and, um, I love, I love the aspect of training and, you know, staying in shape and, and, um, you know, and I'm really, really looking forward to going kicking Woody's butt and Eric's butt. <laughs> oh, good stuff. <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, Harry, it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be a podcast interview if we didn't talk a little bit about the old days. I think you've probably hashed out the Diamondback stuff on many podcasts and interviews over the years. So I won't ask you too many of the same questions everybody's already right. asked you. Um, obviously, you came to England a bunch of times. Uh, you know, you did the Kellogg's uh, 84, 85, Bursi. What did you think of Bursi? You must have, obviously, that was a, a huge event for everybody in Europe and, and for you guys to come and then you add in the crowd and the show. Uh, it must have been pretty cool for you guys as well, right? Oh, man, it was first class. And, you know, if you've ever been, I don't know if you've ever been to the Bursi Stadium before. 85, but 86, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got grass on all the sides and, you mm -hmm. know, you can see the Eiffel Tower and, you know, we're there and we're, you know, playing, we're playing football underneath the Eiffel Tower. We have a running race up the Eiffel Tower, which I'm sure you can't do that now. And I think I won the race up, up the stairs or <laughs> got second to probably Greg or, you know, Stu was too big to run upstairs. He was too, too heavy, but, but we had the, like the first international world foot down championships. I, the, you know, that, yeah. that I see, I yeah, have the so beat cross magazine for that. Guys. Yeah. Yeah, we had all the Frenchy guys, all the international guys, and Xavier you know, we found Some it was raining, so we found some truck. I don't know, someplace indoors, and it was gnarly. I think uh, I got second. I think Greg won. I think Hill <laughs> won the world championships, and Xavier, you know that guy. Yeah, Xavier GT Redwa. Yeah, yeah. Xavier I think Redwa. he got third. Uh, mm -hmm. He did pretty good. Um, but yeah, man. Um, sold out crowd every year kids screaming motocross was there one year and you know i got to have my picture taken with um the coster and hang out with johnny o and and bailey and it was just you know it was all bmx you know i mean here 
you know, we, you and I, and we've traveled the world, you know, racing little kids bikes. And uh, unfortunately those times have changed, you know, for a lot of people out there, they don't get to experience that. And, you know, we, we came to England for Kellogg's twice, or, you know, I think I went four times to England, but Mm -hmm. you know, the Kellogg series, I still get promoted from the Kellogg series. I still see races being posted about myself. And then when Brian Patterson jumped the gate and, (laughs) you know, he said he didn't jump the gate. He really jumped the gate, didn't he? He definitely did. (laughs) His front wheel was all the way over the top of the gate. And he only thing that messed he just didn't have any forward momentum. Right. The wheel came down and I had a lot of forward momentum. Right. So, yeah, but he still passed me, but you know, it was good. It was the last race of the whole thing. And, and so, you know, it was good. We yucked it up in the, in the bus, but it wasn't good for me that, that kind of traveling wasn't really good for me. Cause I didn't like those guys. You know, I, I, I didn't want to like them. I didn't. And so that's, that was, that was for me, it was a little difficult. And I got to hang out with Eddie and Eddie and I shared a room and, you know, so that, that was kind of the saving grace, I guess. Who did you have the most beef with back then? And not just necessarily the Kellogg's, like, you know, just say like the early to mid 80s. Is there any, anybody in particular? Like you and Greg Hill was always stomach buddies, right? Greg and I were, um, we were always friends. Yeah. Um, but Greg, Greg was super intense. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, probably, you know, Kevin McNeil, uh, Frank Post, um, you know, those guys in Moeller. <laughs> Moeller <laughs> hates me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are cool now, though, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I talked to him. Yeah, but he had, yeah. you know, he he made it a point of knocking me down quite a few times. And, you know, yeah. we got into it on the infield in Reno a couple times. And Oh, yeah, I was there. I, yeah, yeah. I got suspended <laughs> for punching him in the back of the head <laughs> in Reno. And, but, uh, you know, it was just people you know we're racing you know what i mean like there's emotions involved and and uh um there's still are, you know i still get pissed off yeah yeah it's bmx you know it's uh yeah. i was at the track last night you know it was my first gate just warming up and and uh one of one of my one of my buddies who's out there he's um first gate he moved over on me and i'm still <laughs> like man it's my first gate like it still gets frustrating you know what i mean wednesday night doesn't mean nothing you know, and you still get that, ah, oh, you know, so I know I man. It's, <laughs> it's so, you know, and you're this, you, you know, I'm sure like what you just said, it's the same for you. You're Dale Holmes, <laughs> Hall of Fame, world champion. You're like, you're the dude, you're a bad dude, right? It, it doesn't matter. And everybody knows who you are. When you show up, you got a freaking <laughs> bullseye on your back. You get those I've, little whippers. I feel more now with the older guys, you know, sometimes I just want to go in lane eight and just kind of just do my own thing, which I do, you know, 90% of the time. But yeah, sometimes guys want to, uh, more older guys, I don't think the young guys care so much that they, they smoke us, but uh, some of the older guys, yeah, they want to get on the gates yeah, and, and have, which sure. sometimes is fun and I enjoy it. But sometimes I just want to get out in gate eight and just ride on my own, you know? Yeah. I, I like to go practice, man. I don't want to, I don't want to go to the track on a practice day and race in. I want to go work on my craft. Mm-hmm. You know, practice a few things that I thought about during the week and see if they work. And then I'll do like three or four gates and I'll work on a little like of something mm-hmm. and then I'll get in with somebody and then I'll race a guy mm-hmm. and I'll see if it works. And if it works, like if I if then I go, OK, that that is good. And I'll go back out and I'll go like what you said, lane eight, because you don't get shut off. Mm-hmm. You can have a lane gate. Nobody's going to move out on you. And, and so it's a great gate to practice your craft at. And yeah. Uh, but I, cause I always have, you know, and that's the way it is now, even, you know, when I raced the 20 inch in 56 and over, you know, I am who I was and, you know, people don't want some 64 year old dude to beat them. So <laughs> they ride a little bit over their head and try a little bit harder than normal. And, you know what I mean? And, uh, and every once in a while I, I have to like swallow my ego or my pride and, and, uh, but that's what, that's why we are who we are that's why you are who you are and i keep trying to do what i used to do you know yeah no i definitely don't feel as as fast but i i say still i i still love doing gates you know it's weird like some people even when they were pro they didn't like doing gates i love doing gates you know i I talked to thomas allier a couple years ago and he was the same when when he used to be over here in huntington beach in the 90s you know we're always doing gates in the street then we're going to track and do gates and I talked yep. to Thomas, yeah, a few years ago, and he's like, I was like, Thomas, I really still love doing gates because I'm the same I do as well, you know? So, 
it's just a fun little thing into you there, know it's well i you know what i've always paralleled gate starts with a golf swing right it's exactly the same thing i mean mm -hmm. swinging a club as good as tiger woods can swing a club it's got to feel good you know and we can do a gate as good as tiger woods can swing a club you right can parallel the skills and the muscle memory involved in doing that and, i mean look at tiger woods he still goes to a swing coach mm -hmm. you know and i'm still looking at how you know andy contest um I helped, I had him help me with my gate. I actually took some clinics in when I was in uh, staying in Chandler. I took some clinics from the local pros there. Dude, I need a new school gate. I can't, this old I'm, school gate. I'm, dude, I'm right with you, dude. I'm exactly it, the same. Yeah. It doesn't work anymore with these random gates. No, you can't no. do old school. No. And so, you know, I'm really, and that's another thing I'm really looking forward to when being involved in daylight and Corbin Sherrod and Elise and, and some of the other elites that they have is I want to talk to them about the gate start. <laughs> if I get me a new school gate start, I'm going to be waxing old Eric Root and Eric Sweets. <laughs> I feel you on the gate though. My I gating was always my thing. I little slingshot and the random yeah. came in as I was, as I was moving out of double A, thank God. Cause if I'd have been double A and a random gate, I, I would have been a moto filler. But uh, oh, I'm the same. I still, my style, Tyler Brown helped me a little bit at the track last year, but I was even thinking this year, you know, I want to do a little bit more racing. I'm like, I really need to spend that time with somebody uh, to, to sit me down and show me how to do it because my gates are not good. Tyler Brown is, is, is a great guy to have do it. So mm. uh, December of 2021, I started talking to Greg Hill about, dude, I suck. How do I not <laughs> suck it? <anymore? laughs> you know, like, oh, right? And he's super cool. You know, I mean, we we chat all the time. And yeah, yeah. You know, he he goes, well, do you do sprints? I go, man, I hate sprints. I don't. I haven't done fifty sprints in the last five years. Mm -hmm. I just hate them. He goes, mm -hmm. well, okay, well, hello, there's your problem. You don't do any sprints. <laughs> so Greg put me on a sprint routine, and I did it, 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 and. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Nobody doesn't already know. Right. I just hated sprints. Didn't yeah, do yeah. It. And it's just, it's amazing how repetition repetitious the gate start is. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm at the legacy national and I can't get out of the gate to save my freaking life. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'm like a half a bike off a wheel off consistently. And so I call, I text Greg, you know, dude, what's the deal what are, he goes well are you watching the lights i don't know I, I listen i've been listening to the gate because i'm really into music right so i've been listening to the gates for 25 years mm. he goes well watch the lights dude i won my semi i got to the first turn uh, first, i've been thinking that so lights. watching the, you think watching the lights has really helped oh my god it's changed the gate for me I, I was thinking i need to do that but i just the same as you i've been doing it 25 years you know looking down dude, no watch the lights and you just go on red you, you you go on red and you commit to it yeah the key is it's the ultimate commitment because you when you hear the sound you you kind of anticipate it you know you're a little bit maybe whatever but when you see the red dude you just nail it as hard as you can yeah. go i miss that feeling of going down with the gate because i can never catch it up on my old school gate you know yeah you yeah know, so, it feels so perfect when you go down with the gate but that was decades so ago you, <laughs> you start a little bit closer to the front of the bike, just a uh -huh. tiny bit, you know, yeah. and you go on red. That's what Hill said. <laughs> and it's changed. It's just so non-stressful because mm -hmm. you get up there and, you know, you understand that it's simple. Red light, I go. I yeah. go as hard as I can freaking go on the red light. As long as your form, you know, and, and you're technically correct, you know, the weight and your hips and your head and everything are going down the hill. Dude, you try it, try it. And I, I need to. And one of the reasons I don't, because when I do go to the track, I enjoy riding. I love it, but I have to make it a, a window of an hour just because I don't like being late into the night. You know, I don't like eating late. I'm, I'm an old right. man. I like to go to bed early. Um, so I'd really take a, you know, an hour to be at the track and, and then I'm kind of, yeah, losing interest and want to get out of there. So like what I was saying about getting cut off, if I get cut off, that's another five minutes I've lost because I've still got to ride around the track. I got to go back around the hill. So <laughs> I'm already trying to get quality in why I'm there. So that's why 
I'm like, should I learn? Should I, should I try something different with my gate? I'm like, ah, I'm going to waste too much time. And I'm only going to be here an hour, you know? So yeah, I do need that take time. And I, maybe I need to give Hill a call, you know? So <laughs> you, you know what? Um, yeah. You know, just show up one night and say, okay, tonight, yeah. tonight, mm. first gate, I'm watching the lights. Yeah. And just go in lane eight and, you know, don't worry about anything. And, you know, I guarantee you, man, I, I was hesitant. I did it. Like I, I raced half the day off, off listening. And then the very next race I went in, I think it was my semi. Mm. And I go, fuck it. Greg yeah. said to do it. Greg Hill. I mean, yeah, Greg, yeah, yeah. Bob Wire Hill said, watch the lights. <laughs> and, uh, and I freaking won my semi. I got third that day. Yeah, on the box I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna now I spoke to you. I'm totally gonna try it on Sunday. I'll be at the track on Sunday, so yeah, I will yeah. give it a go. Hey, Harry, yeah. there seems to be like some good uh steam picking up now with these old school racers. You know, Todd Hoffman had uh Fogtown last year, and obviously, yep. we've seen Miranda and Eric Carter are putting on uh their one. I keep forgetting the name, Dirty Fest. Um, uh, did you go to Fogtown? I don't think he was there, right? No, I was um, I wanted to go. Uh, I was back east on tour, and um, I've always wanted. Well, I used to do the the Rockford old school show. Yeah, I was a guest speaker in '09. I think I went there in '06, and I was in that area back there. And for the Rockford National, I thought, you know, maybe they're gonna have the bike show. Well, they the bike show doesn't happen any longer on the national weekend because the the bike show is so big that the national takes over too much of the park there's no room for the bike show so they rescheduled the bike the big bike show for their state qualifier race well they used my image off the uh, 79 cover the jmc image doing a leery they used that to promote their bike show well they had no idea it was i was anywhere near the area and could show up and as soon as i saw them that they used my image i go dude i'm going because I, I, I had thought about driving all the way back to California and doing that. And I thought, no, I'm going to go to Rockford. I'm going to support this show. I'm going to support the fact they used me to promote it. And it was, the, and I stayed with the Meltons um, at their house. That was like the first night I had a home cooked meal and slept in a bed in like five months or whatever it was, you know, and, uh, and the promoters of the bike show, they were really, you know, they were great hosts. I got to promote them, you know, my turbo and, um, and I raced the state race. They had an old school race that they put on because I was going to be there and I ended up winning. That's what that number, well, you can't see it, but there's a number one plate back there. And I won the old school flat pedal shootout championship on my turbo. And, and it was just an epic weekend. And that's why I didn't go to Frogtown. It's not that I, you know, don't support that. Um, I plan to be there this year at Frogtown. I'd love to do the the dirty fest that Miranda's putting on with, um, you know, through the podcast that they're doing, um, you know, obviously we're all, we're all about the old, the olden days, you know, but uh, because, you know, we uh, grew up in it and a lot of these guys grew, stopped racing in that era. They haven't had the opportunity to, you know, get clipped in and get on a full on racetrack and, and really try to go fast on today's tracks. This is more important to me racing nowadays than racing that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, it's not that I don't support it. It's just that I don't want to live in that era and put all my mental eggs in that basket. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I you know, here's the thing that I, on my tour, I went to, uh, one of the second stops was Guy Cooper's house. You know, if you know who Guy Cooper is, he's yeah, he no, was I my, saw pictures. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cross legend, one of my freaking guys, Johnny O and Guy Cooper, because he was Gar Guy Airtime Cooper, and I jumped, and you know, Johnny was smooth and fluid and always perfect on his bike. So I took the combination of those two guys and I put it into me. You know, what I mean, like that's kind of how I modeled myself as a as a bmx racer and so there was a bike show at guy cooper's house and so i thought and i heard about it and um cash matthews invited me out and i thought i'm gonna go meet guy cooper <laughs> cool so i went out and you know guy built a bmx course and 
you know, and the court, you know, Sky Cooper, he gets a tractor, right? And he plows this BMX track. And so the starting line is off the back of this pool deck. Yeah. You know? And it's like a 30 foot, almost straight down. And you, you got to take off. That's a rubber band start. And so I borrowed this clapped out Yamaha motorbike and, <laughs> um, they put me in the class with Johnny, with uh, Cooper. And I thought, no, I'm going to race the younger class. So I raced the class below guy. Um, and I had to race this 26 year old hot shoe dude. And he won the first moto. Um, I won the second moto. Oh wait, I think, no, there was only two motos. He won the first one. So I took, I had lane choice. So I went inside and I watched how the guy was dropping the, letting go of the rubber band. Right. Uh, I got to figure this out. Right. Yeah. So I watched him. And so he would move his thumb just a tiny bit, right. Before he would let go of the rubber band. Right. Thought, oh, okay. That's the trick. So I got right next to the starter. Right. And I'm watching the tip of his thumb. Thank and as God. soon as I saw his thumb flinch, man, I fucking He's took gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, yeah, so I ended up winning on that bike, but, um, you know, guys, then, so now I'm drinking beer in Guy Cooper's race garage, you know, one at the, at the end of the day and the Colorado nationals on TV, the motocross outdoor race and Cooper go, guy goes, Hey man, you want to hang out and watch the national with us? What? Are you serious? So, you know, we go into guy's house. He's got like a 400 inch screen TV that takes up the whole wall. He's got, you know, 11 recliners and a, you know, all, you know, so I'm sitting next to guy Cooper and I'm listening to me. Tell me about Watch what this guy does here. Watch how he weights this peg. Watch this. What? And now I'm getting the detailed pro level. And it was just, it was, and that was part of my tour. You know, I mean, that was one of the things I had hoped to do. And and the other thing about, about the tour was to never say no. No matter what I was invited to go do, I said yes. Mm -hmm. Because whatever it was, I was going to, it was going to be a new experience for me. You know, like uh, Gina Duvall from back east said, hey, come to my campground we're gonna go have crab at the crab shack on the long island sound and i said okay so we rode our bike i mean i just i never said no i said yes to everything and the experiences that i got and that's that's part of the seven month tour and that's why i can't go back yeah i can't wait to go do it again you know yeah and like i say hopefully more of these events start popping up i think miranda's hoping this uh well it seems like it's getting a good steam already what the, what they got going over here at vale lake and uh yeah, yeah it's such yeah. good could be cool if more of these events start popping up and it's yeah another another opportunity for the older guys to go there not just race and stuff but like it seems like you know to hang out i think uh you know danny nelson doesn't go to many events but he was at huff's event last year and uh oh, good. yeah i'm yeah. sure miranda's gonna try and get ellis and some of them guys over to this one so uh, I think it'd be really yeah, dude, cool. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get a bike. I'll race, man. I'll, mm. I'll race multiple classes or, or whatever, you know, and suspension class. I don't know. I'm not going to ride a 29er or a 26. No, nope. I'm not going to ride a big, old clap, a big fat bike that, you know, anybody could go down the hill on. No, I want to ride something twitchy and, you know. Yeah. Keep it 20 inch, right? Yeah. Keep it real. Hey, let's uh, let's jump back a little bit to uh, like say you've 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 talked a lot about Diamondback. Um, tell us a little bit about balance and stuff because it was it wasn't around much longer, but I think it was like you, Hill, Hayden, Purse, right? Yeah, man. Um, well, okay, so balance was I had left Diamondback and I just stumbled onto this company that uh, I don't know how I found them or they found me or something, but. They were owned by two Taiwanese guys. Uh, one guy was an importer for Kmart stuff when he would have this huge warehouse. And so he brought everything Kmart in and he shipped the Kmarts all over the country. So he had a lot of money. And then the other guy was uh, Robin Ho, who owned Marvel Cycles in ta Taiwan, a huge manu uh, uh, mountain bike or bicycle manufacturing company. And he was doing Marins and Konas and all these high-end brand mountain bikes. So together they started Balance. And uh, so they brought me in as the general manager and, and um, they had no dealers. They had no bikes. They had nothing, right? The only thing they had was an assembly line that they brought over from Taiwan that they could say assembled in USA. Everything came, you know, in parts, wheels were built, everything all was all done. And, and so they brought me in and, you know, I put together a sales force and I ended up with, uh, I think 
we finally got 2,800 dealers. I oh, wow. took them from zero sales to 6.5 million in sales. In that short amount of time, we won the Golden Crank Bike of the Year. The Balanced Bike did. Um, I sponsored Mikey King. Oh, King, on, when he won the Worlds, right? Was he on balance? Yeah, I sponsored. And, you know, I call up Mikey. I go, hey, Mike, got this deal. So I put him on, you know, this pile of crap dual suspension bike with um, pro forks on the front. And it was a, it was a, had a Marzocchi rear shock in, cause I was still tied in, still had some emotional connection with Marzocchi, right? So sent Mike to France on this mountain bike. He went last, ended up winning the world championships on a balance, right? I, I forgot mean, he was on balance. What met, met a BF, I think it was, right? Yeah, no, he was on balance, man. And yeah. then he came back and we got him dialed in on a slalom bike and he won the national uh Norba national dual slalom championship within the same year. So within one year, balance won the downhill mountain bike championships world, and um and then King won the national Norba dual slalom championship. So then I pick up Greg. John Purse, Matt Hayden, and myself. And I won the master's title in 93 and 94, you know, back-to-back masters on for balance. I mean, I had Greg Hill and, um, per, you know, the Jackal. You I mean, know, Purse, and Purse and Hayden were banging out podium. I mean, Purse was winning a lot yeah, on balance, yeah, you know. Yeah. Hayden the, was in there. And the bike was a good bike. I mean, it had some great geometries. And to let it be known, um. I've always been a Christophe Lebec fan because the guy was, you know, obviously very, very good, you know, changed our sport when he came over here. So I rode a specialized, the very, the same. I remember you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got one of those, man. And I basically kind of copied and I still got that bike. I still have it here. It's in, it's in my storage unit, you know, right across the way here. Uh, I still have that specialized. And so I kind of built the balance after that specialized. Because I knew a thing worked great because Levesque rode the crap out of it, right? So mm. that's why our balances work so good, I think. Um, and then we did cruisers. and um, But, yeah, we won the Golden Crank Award. And, um, Hayden almost won, on balance, the 94 Worlds in Detroit, in, in Michigan, right? In early past Nelson. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah, got second. But any a bit, bit of a, you know, Hayden was being nice to, to Thunder, I think. But... Hayden was, yeah, second place at the Worlds and very close to, to winning the Worlds on, on 20 in BMX as well, you know? It was just, yeah, uh, so we, we, it was just a, you know, it was a glorious time, you know, for the sport. It, it, I think the sport back then was kind of in a transition a mm-hmm. little bit, you know? It, it was phasing from the 80s and, you know, and it had a kind of a lull when freestyle, and I think freestyle was finally, had run its course as far as a popular televised and you know a thing to do with contests because people started getting hurt right so i think the freestyle kind of fizz out and people started to get back in with racing budgets and you know gt and and you know just it was a good time for balance and so that um so but what happened was robin ho who owned the factory in taiwan because balance was doing so good and there was a price advantage for balance because they were making all the, the bikes and the frames. A lot of these manufacturers that were in the Marvel factory started to leave. So then Robin lost a lot of his capacity, walked out the front door because they didn't feel as though they were getting trade treated fairly with the balance name being there, a conflict of interest kind of thing. And so Robin had to close the factory. And, uh, and then when that happened, that side of the money went away and then ben shaw he didn't need he didn't need the bike company you know it was just a it was a project that they did together um so ben pulled out ben shaw was the name ben pulled out robin pulled out and then you know balance was that was done that's a shame you guys like say really thinking about it now including you know obviously with king winning the mountain bike worlds as well you guys did a lot of stuff in a short period of time with a yeah unheard of brand which is uh with with us all-star you know, lineup, you know, so, um, you know, and I cool. think a, a lot of it is, you know, not crediting myself, but 
they firmly believed in everything it didn't matter what I brought to the table to them. Hey guys, this is what we need to do. And this is how we need to do it. And they were always trusting and believing in my, my, my ideas and my direction. And then, you know, I had uh, Sergio from Smith, Smith and Smith advertising, and there is no Smith. (laughs) There's not one Smith in his advertising campaign or company is Sergio Bravo. And so he did a lot of the Diamondback stuff when I was product manager at Diamondback. So he did a lot of the ads. So if you go back and look at all of the advertising and the graphics and the look and the feel that Balance had was because of him and I working together. He was the guy. And as soon as I got on Balance, I go, Sergio, we got this really good deal. We got a blank slate. We can, we can do whatever we want to do as edgy as we want to do it. And so there, there was this one ad and it's the coolest ad. I think we took, we did a picture of Mikey King hanging upside down with gravity boots and we <laughs> lit it a certain way. We were in Eddie's garage, at the King's garage down in San Diego. And I go, Mikey, get in gravity boots and hang upside down and we'll shoot you. And dude, that was a full page ad, balance ad, just edgy as heck. You know? Did you guys have like a big box fan as well? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we had a, you know, that was the other thing. I said, man, we got it. And that was our delivery truck, you know? And I said, yeah. we got, I told Ben, we got, we got to, we got to wrap this truck and. 90s I motocross said, really wanted. Yeah. That's what the 90s motocross, McGrath of them guys, that kind of same kind of time, right? With all box yeah, yeah, fans exactly. then. Box fans were, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I think Marietti, I think I had Dave Marietti, you know, just, it was the logo that Sergio did, the balanced logo. And I had Marietti, he was just, he was he was already doing the the hot chop stuff but he came out and you know he wrapped it for me and yeah that thing was big but it went to all the races you know what i mean we looked Mm -hmm. we looked bigger than who we were you know we put on a big presence and uh you know when you got greg hill and john purse and matt hayden and you know me and the masters cruiser class and um you know mikey king winning on a mountain bike you know and we're backing it up with some advertising when there was still some a little bit of you know magazines out there yeah, um, we, you know we can sell swampland. To... Swamp yeah, no, that that was a really cool, cool little thing yeah. that you guys had. It's a shame it didn't last longer. Let's wrap it up with one more question, Harry. We, we could yeah. go on for hours talking and stuff, but we can jump back on at another point and hit some more yes, subjects. But I wanted to tell us a little bit about uh, your own brand you did at the time, Leary Dirtworks. So maybe yeah, I did, some of that. You know, it was a it was a great experience. It was something I've always wanted to do. Um, I did it. Um, it was it was all right. I did it for five years, um, but I, my wife and I, Elisa at the time, we were going to have a daughter or we we're going to have a baby, and you know this really wasn't it wasn't the right time to be floundering around trying to you know get a startup going, and and so I kind of just closed it down. Um, you know what I mean? It was just time. Okay, dad, or I had to become a dad, you know, and got an adult a little bit and. Um, so yeah, it was great. And, you know, I had, I had an amazing team. I mean, we, I had cruiser women that never lost. Um, um, you know, Clint Miller was on the team. Uh, you know, we ran, we, we ran a lot of good riders and it was fun. It was a great experience. Um, but I'm going to be coming out with, you know, a whole new thing, HLT4. We're going to do some 29ers and, you know, they're going to look like the Diamondback. And I got this really great idea i think for a finish that nobody's doing yet then um so craig turner he craig turner lives here in havasu and you know he's building all the you know gt stuff and a bunch of stuff here in town and so that's yeah. kind of on the on the on the drawing board i think oh cool i think I always thought uh the dirt work stuff looked really cool you know i like the black and stuff and if you flip through some of the snap issues it's quite a lot you got some good coverage on there when you was doing it and i always thought it looked cool you know yeah, Keith oh. Mulligan was there at the time. So yeah, mm. he was a, he was, you know, that guy's super talented, and and you know we were able to go out and do a couple good photo shoots and had a good time. And it's just so funny, man, to see what the guys are doing from back in the day, like Spike Jones and you know Mulligan and you know Todd Britton and you know Tony Donaldson and you know it's great to see Bob Osborne kind of getting you know a little bit dabble back in the sport and getting some recognition not that he needs any but you know there's there's a huge 
era or population out there, sorry about my feet, that people don't know about how influential and what uh, Wizard Publications did, and even High Torque did for the sport of BMX and what people are living in now in racing and doing what they're doing is, was, you know, grass rooted and cultivated during the BMX plus BMX action days. And uh, so it's really cool, you know, that Bob and Wendy are, are kind of a little more active than they were before. I yeah, no, I, I mean, you listen to any podcast, probably more, a bit more on the, the, there's more podcasts, I would say, and stuff in, in the freestyle side, but everybody still always talks about, you know, on social media, on Instagram and stuff, everyone, you know, Bob Osborne, Wendy Osborne, and, you know, I'm a magazine guy, collect magazines. Um, and I mean, the pictures even now still look amazing to you guys, you know, oh. so definitely cool for you guys to be part of that era. Um no, I, I I totally get it, Harry. Like I said, we can we could go on forever. We'll definitely jump on and do this again. Seems like uh, if we get a bit of yes. bit of traffic on this YouTube thing, we'll do it again. We'll say we can That's do it right. in so many different directions with you on stories and stuff. But uh, I appreciate you doing that, and uh, good luck this year. We'll be watching, and uh, yeah, hopefully see you at uh, maybe Bakersfield next yeah, month. Yeah. It'd be cool hey, to catch up. Good luck with Divide. I love I love your guys' logo, man. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's yeah, super yeah. cool. It's, just, it's split, man. It's really eye-catching. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, man. It's, it's my friend Mark Ward in, in the UK that's done all the graphics and stuff. He's done a great job. And, you know, it's just yeah. keeping it small and fun. And we've got a couple of things in the works for this year with a, a frame and a fork and a bars. And I uh, just want to keep it fun and, and finish BMX um, on my terms and um, yeah, yeah. just just do it my own way and have fun with it and, and work with people. I really enjoy doing it. So I'm excited to do it. I'd like to try a pair of bars on my 20 someday, maybe. Yeah, oh, absolutely. As soon as I've got a man, you'll be the first guy that can get some. No problem. All right, go ahead. All right, Harry. Appreciate it. Great talking. And we'll catch right. everybody next time. Yes, sir. Peace. Cheers. See you guys at the track. See ya. All right.